Hey, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. Time for another retro gameplay video. And today we're going to be doing something a little bit different because this is a brand new Commodore 64 game made in 2018 and we're going to be playing it next, so stick around. Hey, Commodore 64 here, bringing you retro and elite dangerous related content in two separate playlists. I unbox, I build, I play. If any of that stuff interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you have already, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Now that's all out of the way. I've got a couple of unboxings to do first, and they relate very closely to the 2019 annual. There goes my microphone, and they. <laughs> And they relate very closely to the 2019 annual edition of Zap64. Uh, first one I've got, I believe, is a mug. Where are my scissors? Here they are. Let's have a look at this, shall we? Um, and then I can have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee with my... Here we are. Lovely jubbly. And it's got the uh, little little guy there, little character. Um, oh, that's a thing on a spring, I, th I think, isn't it? Is that thing on a spring? Yeah, which was one of the games that they did on the Zap 64 magazine back in the day. Excellent. I should be making a cup of coffee in that very shortly. So this brand new game has been created for Chris Wilkins of Retro Fusion magazine to accompany the 2019 annual edition of Zap64 magazine. If you didn't know that there was a Zap64 magazine, um, it was released in late 2018 and uh, I did an unboxing which you can click the eye over there um, and watch that if you like. It's a live stream. It's a bit dodgy. I've never done a live stream before. It didn't go very well, I'm going to be honest with you. Inside the annual magazine, there is a feature detailing the making of the game in the form of diary logs by its creators, Trevor Story, Stuart Collier, and Sal Cross. Just show it to you over there so you can get a decent look at it. And it's really good. Um, they actually, the creators of it are also in the game in pixel form. And there's loads of photographs and screen captures starting with like initial sketches and ideas and the planning notes to the sprite design and inked and full color cover designs it's really good it goes through everything from the loaders to the music to the characters in the game and it's really in depth and it gives you a, a decent feeling of what goes into making a game or a retro game at least so yeah, if you haven't got this, I do really recommend trying to get hold of it if it's available anywhere. Because it's just a lovely nostalgic trip through Commodore 64's gaming history. But not just that, it goes through all the new games that they make and have been making through the last sort of 5-10 years. And they do some new reviews on those and where you can get hold of them and stuff like that. So it's there's stuff in the future as well. I mean, <laughs> the thing I love about it as well is the, the when you used to get the promotional material for the hardware. Well, they've actually got the Mini 64 down there, so there's still <coughs> there's still some hardware that you can buy. <coughs> anyway, let's get on with the unboxing. I don't know which camera to look at. You, you, camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be talking to you, and I'm gonna show on the screen here what's going on, and hopefully not cut my fingers off in the process. I'm just, I'm probably gonna have to pixelate the address out now, aren't I? That's gonna be some post work, never mind. Um, and, here it is. <laughs> I don't know what what do you what do you call this kind of case? I'm not sure what the, what the official name for it is, but it's like a plastic kind of a collector's case. So and there's the cassette tape. No instruction manual. I guess there's none needed. And there's a 
a little description there and some screenshots. Um, it says screenshots taken from actual Commodore 64, which is nice because a lot of the time <laughs> you get the, the cassette tapes and there'd be like 16 bit version graphics on the back or graphics from a spectrum or something like that. And you're like, well, couldn't you be bothered to put a Commodore 64 picture on the back? But they, you know, this is only on the Commodore 64, I suppose. So anyway, enough talking. Let's stick this in the tape drive and get playing, shall we? After I've made a cup of tea in my Zap 64 mug. <laughs> Righto, let's put this bad boy on then. Press play on tape. Here we go. There's something nice about loading a cassette tape, isn't there? Cartridges are great because they're instant. Um, floppies are quicker and more accessible, but there's something about this whole building up the anticipation for the game to start that I love. When the music starts kicking in and Start getting all the games with it. Oh, there you go. It's a turbo tape loader, so it should be fairly quick. It's nice music, I like it. So they this game borrows very heavily from um a thing on a spring in terms of the gameplay, um, which is what I've read in the magazine, and that they've tried to make it a cartoony based thing. <laughs> I think that the guy looks a bit like Bender, with like an octopus Bender from Futurama. And you may recognise this, um... <laughs> I can't point because it's mirrored, you may recognise this logo here, because that is was a bit of a coveted award that Zap would give to games that got really good reviews, that would give it a sizzler stamp. So it's another little callback to the magazine, which is nice. I'm going to do a bit of a longer video for this one. Just because not everybody's going to have this game or have access to this game. I've got it on a pre-order. Um, by the time this video goes out, maybe quite a few of you will have it. But I imagine some people will be looking forward to seeing what the game's about. So I'm just kind of letting the music play. Nothing quite like a Sid music. A Sid music. It's <laughs> nothing like learning how to speak. Where's my microphone? Oh, there it is. Right, yeah. Once we get some good sound. <laughs> but hope, hopefully, I'm picking up some decent sound. But... Nothing worse than getting a video back and editing it to find that the. Um, audio is just unusable <laughs> and you have to sit there tweaking it. Here we go. Not too bad, that wasn't too long to, to load. Sizzler. And um, <laughs> looks like we're in the Zap64 office at the moment. Okay, here we go. Some characters. Flappy, Ghoul, Saurus, Ashes, Gump, <laughs> Gump, Bongo, Frank, <laughs> Drago, Drago Malfoy, Zip Havoc, Slappy Sam, <laughs> Jagunius. There's uh, Officer's Entrance. That's 
Right, so I'll just cling on here. And then um, I need a point where he's in the there. That's the best point, isn't it? So as he's coming back to me, that's when I want to try and jump. So if I get up now. No, that doesn't work at all! Oh. <laughs> Planet! <laughs> No, it was perfect. And I just... Ah! <laughs> right, I'm going to wait. <laughs> One heart down. Five to go. Up. <laughs> Three to go. Let's see what's up here. Okay. So, there's a, like a flashing thing up there. So... Oh, and that is some sort of trampoline. But I've got something. And there's another something over there. Oh, can I duck? No. Oh, yeah. Let's get that. No, not going that way. That looks horrible. I got some hearts back, didn't I? That's good. Huh. Not for long. <laughs> oh, God. Um, it's all about timing, isn't it? Timing's everything. Yeah, let's not do a funeral for a friend sing along, shall we? No, 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 no. Go this way. Oh, are those floors gonna bounce me or drop me? I'm gonna jump over them. No, oh, I'm gonna try to jump over them. Great, it's a dragon firing massive eggs at me, and I'm dead. <laughs> Have another go at this, try to get past Gump. So, yeah, as it's walking back to me, it's good, isn't it? Oh, but not that time, not every time. This time! Yeah! Oh man! Get past Saurus? Oh, I was really... thought I was going to make that... Oh yeah, let's just chuck hearts all over the place now. Brilliant. Oh, man. Got it. And I think I've got some hearts back. Which I'm gonna lose now. Ah! <laughs> God! Ah! It's a shit storm. There's things everywhere. Wow! Um, another. Is that the same dragon? Ah! Oh, I've ended up here again. What you can do about this is there. I've just got to. Oh! Revo Emag. <laughs> oh, get game over. <laughs> that makes more sense. <laughs> it's a pleasant dying music, isn't it? <laughs> I can't figure out how to get up past this loady bar thing. It just chucks me up there, look, and I can't. No! Oh my goodness me. Jump, jump, jump! Yeah, no! Yes. Um, so what are the middle bits? Is there... Because there's nothing, you know, there's no uh, manual to come with it in there, so... I wonder if it tells me in, my, in the Zap magazine what it is that I've collected two of. Ah, oh, there are musical notes that I've got there. And the floppy disks on the left of that. Um, some sort of looks like ant faces. So they must be characters, maybe they're sprites. And then maybe the other ones are light bulbs. The light bulbs are ideas. The, the ant faces must be sprites. And. Um, the floppy disks, oh, the musical notes are Sid music, and the floppy disks are 
coding. So we've got two pieces of music. Now all we need to do is try and find... Um, right, there's the offices. How do I get to those offices? With my code. Right, let's... But as he comes back towards me now, I can... Oh. Did I push it twice again, or does he just do a second jump? I think maybe I'm pushing the button twice. I keep doing a double jump. Right, that's all right, that's okay. Oh, that's not okay. Right, get that. Right, now we've got one piece of music and one sprite. This way, and we fall down there. Oh, you muppet! Right, up we go. Up, 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 up. Okay, right. Let's see if we can. Oh, we got it, but we took a hit. Hey, that was good. Right. We want to try and jump over him about there, don't we? So, that's the way. Oh, I thought that was the way. But no, it wasn't. Aha, look, another... Stand by this window here. Got it. Now we've got um, awesome. One piece of coding, two pieces of SID music, and one sprite. Where are you coming down? He's coming down there. Try and jump over this door. Go, 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 go! Hey! Right, a couple of saws here. Don't know what that floor's going to do. I <laughs> just legged it. Ah! Okay, right, there's some ghouls there, they just, I just got, oh, ha, there was, a, there was a key up there, there was a key right there, it's gone now, but it was there, well, that's, that's as far as I've got, one piece of coding, two pieces of sip music, and two sprites. And I think I'm going to have to call it a day for now because I have been playing this for hours now, which is embarrassing really when you look at how far I've got. <laughs> but let's just do a little quick overview of what I thought of the game and if I recommend you go out and get it. I say that like you can just go to Woolworths and hand over your 6 95 and get your cassette tape. Um, I will put links in the description of where you can buy this game. So there we go, that's my little run through on Sizzler. What did I think about the game? Well, let's start with the graphics. Really well presented, love the cartoony look, like the bright colours, thought the animation was fine, that was, that was pretty good. Quite polished, it looks like a like a proper Commodore 64 game, like a, a really good one that you would actually fork out money to buy, which I did. Gameplay, difficult in my opinion. Not in a bad way, similar to Thing on a Spring, which comes as no surprise because that was the inspiration for the game. And it's going to give it some playability to... I mean, you don't want to run through the game in the first 
in 20 minutes. Who wants that, right? That's not value for money. Uh, so the difficulty, it could be a plus. Um, we'll have to see because it's going to take me months and months and months to play this and, and complete it or just get anywhere in it. <laughs> and I'm gonna, obviously I'm going to carry on playing it. Um, may not be making videos about it every week, but I'm going to carry on playing it. Music. Nice. Very pleasant. And I mean that in a non-condescending kind of way. Sid music or video game music can become repetitive and annoying after a while and I quite enjoy the Sid music to this. So overall my thoughts on the game are positive. It does seem somewhat ironic me reviewing a game that's been made by professional game reviewers but how could I not play this game and how could I not put my personal thoughts on it forward after playing the game? You know, they're not as revered as guys from Zap64 who made the game, but this is just what I thought of the game as a gamer. What did you think about the game? Have you played it yet? Are you planning on buying it? Did you do the pre-order with the little plastic um, case thing here? Have you bought any other recent games that they've made? Or did you buy any of the Zap64 merch? Like, you know, the mugs, they did bags and caps and all that kind of stuff. Maybe you got some of that. Or maybe you got the Crash stuff because I believe they did an annual for the Crash magazine. They've just announced that they're going to do another annual for um, Zap64, so they'll probably do another Crash one. And uh, th is there an Atari one or something? Uh, anyway, check out Retrofusion Books and get um, Chris Wilkins on the Facebook and keep up to date with it. And you'll see that he does a whole bunch of retro stuff. He does his own retro magazine called Retro Fusion as well. And let me know in the comments what you thought about the video or what you think about these recent comebacks of the old computer magazines or just anything you like. Just like it in the comments section, pop me a like, subscription, whatever you like. <laughs> really appreciate any kind of um, input to the channel. And have a great day. Keep gaming. And this is Commodore64 signing off.